Hi, Terry. You're a cloud developer advocate, and you're here to tell us about three-tier applications on Cloud Run. That's right. In my previous jobs, I used to build three-tier applications with containers and virtual machines. And now that we can run containers serverlessly and effortlessly on Cloud Run, that's become even easier. Can't wait to hear more. First off, Terry, I have a confession to make. Most of my Cloud Run applications have been pretty simple two-tier affairs. That's fine. If you're building a service that's a layer on top of database, just like the REST API for your application. But if you're building a web application that sends HTML and JavaScript to the user, it's helpful, I think, to separate that from the API that the web app uses. Hmm, that makes sense. Uh, do you have an example app we can look at? Why, yes, I do. I created the sample to-do web app that you can use as a starter for your own applications. Go to deploystack.dev and click on the to-do app. OK, doing so now. Uh, there's a button here for getting started in Cloud Shell. Uh, should I click that? Yes. That will clone the repo to your account and open a command line on Google Cloud, something that we call Open in Cloud Shell. Got it. Then you can run the install script. Um, and this is going to take a couple minutes. OK, I'm kicking off the script now. Uh, see you back here after we've refilled our tea or coffee. Sounds good. All right, we're back. The installation script finished, and it gave me a URL to the deployed application. And here is the working to-do application. I can add to-do items, and I can mark them as done. Now, you said that you'd wanted to know more about the three-tier architecture? Oh, yeah. Uh, could you tell me and the viewers uh, how this application actually works? Sure. First, uh, go back to the architecture diagram. I got it. Uh, here it is. OK, so at the top, we have the web browsers running on computers or mobile devices. And they connect to the front end, which is a Cloud Run service. And that box says Cloud Run, uh, but it also says Nginx. Yes, uh, Nginx is a web server that is very good at serving static content, like HTML and JavaScript, to, to browsers. Um, I could have written some code myself that does that, but why bother when there is a battle-tested open source package that definitely does it better? Right. Better go with the wisdom of the crowd. Uh, when I open uh, the Cloud Run section of the Cloud Console, I see two services, to do API and to do FE here. Uh, the second service is the front end? Yeah, that's right. The, the other one is the middleware. Oh, right, uh, middleware. Uh, let's go back to the architecture diagram. Uh, what happens in the box called middleware? Well, that is a REST API that the web browser calls to read and write to-do items. Uh, I like Go, so I, I've written it in that language. But you could write it in any language that can handle HTTP requests and that you can put in a container. Right. Uh, I write most of my Cloud Run services in Python or Node.js. Uh, OK, tell me about this yellow box here uh, titled VPC. That's the virtual private cloud for this project. The MySQL database and Redis cache should not be reachable from the public internet. Uh, we protect them by putting them in a VPC. The middleware that I wrote in Go sits in between. It can be reached from the public internet, and it can also connect to the database and cache on the VPC using a tool called serverless VPC access, which we also configure in this project. That makes sense. Uh, I noticed that the database says Cloud SQL. Yes, uh, the application uses Google's managed MySQL product called Cloud SQL. I could have set up a virtual machine and installed MySQL on it myself, but it's easier to let Google do that for me. Ah, right. And when I go to Cloud SQL in the console here, uh, yes, I see a database instance. Yep, that's the one uh, created by my installation script. All right. Back to the architecture diagram again. Uh, the Redis cache is there to speed up the middleware. Right. The middleware will check the cache first when it needs to read to-do items. If the to-do items are found in the cache, the middleware doesn't have to do a slow database read. And then the user will get the data faster to their browser. I noticed that the box here says both memory store and Redis. Yeah, I, I made a similar call as with the MySQL database. I could have set up a virtual machine and installed Redis on it, but it's a lot easier just to use the Google managed version of Redis called memory store. Um, also, the VPC security is very easy to set up for that. Very good. This application is a great template to build new applications from. So let's say I want to build an expense reporting application, and I want to start from this uh, your application here as a template. Uh, how would I update the code? Well, that's where the CI CD layer comes in. 
We use Cloud Build to build the containers for the code, store them in Artifact Registry, and then deploy to CloudBrot. All that is set up and ready to go. You can easily just swap out the code and replace this sample app with your own. Just edit the code and the Docker files accordingly. Very good. Uh, what does this Secret Manager in the lower right-hand corner do? Secret Manager is another Google managed service for managing sensitive information for your application, things like passwords or database connection strings, etc. Uh, it can act as sort of an encrypted environment variable store, but for your whole project. Additionally, access to the secrets and the encryption keys used to secure them can be managed by a developer themselves. In this project, Cloud Build can interface with Secret Manager and inject the secrets into the configuration of your Cloud Run service, populating environment variables in your application. Great. Thanks for showing us this application, Terry. I can't wait to use it as a template for my next web app. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have questions for Terry or me about this app, please add them in the comments. Also, let us know in the comments if there are other serverless topics you'd like to hear about in future episodes. See you next time. Mm -hmm.